Hi everyone and welcome to the Studying Accounting at Edinburgh Business School talk. Uh, my name is Dr Darren Jubb. I'm a lecturer here at Heriot Watt within the Business School. And uh, today we're just going to run you through some slides that give an overview of what it's like to study accounting with us. So what are we going to cover today? Well, today we're going to firstly look at what it means to study within the Edinburgh Business School. We're going to then look at our performance, both as a business school and a university. We'll speak a little bit about the entry requirements. And before we get into talking about what it's like to study accounting with us in particular, we'll think about um, what accounting itself is, because I know some students are coming to this without a strong background knowledge of, of accounting. We'll then cover what it's like to study um, accounting within the business school, uh, focused on both learning and teaching aspects, as well as um, elements beyond the classroom. Turning our attention to Edinburgh Business School, I'm going to take a few moments just to run through um, some facts about the business school and to give you a little bit of an insight into the institution that you'll be joining. If you were to join us at Edinburgh Business School, you'd be joining Scotland's largest business school. We have thousands of students spread across different countries, especially across our three campuses in Edinburgh, Malaysia and Dubai. Now that can quite seem quite daunting to be joining thousands of students in a large business school, but actually we pride ourselves on bringing our local Edinburgh campus feel to what we do. And it's something that I experienced when I was an undergraduate student at Harriet Watt, and it's something that continues to this day. So whilst you'll be joining a massive cohort of students spread across different countries, you'll actually get a quite a local experience, which I think is very important. The other good thing about joining Edinburgh Business School is you're joining illustrious alumni who've gone on to be CEOs, to run startup companies and even be prime ministers of different countries. So you're joining a school that has rich expertise and a great track record of placing students in employment. Next, we're going to look at our performance. Before we get into this, what, what do we mean by our performance? Well, this is how both as a business school and a university we performed on and the national and global stage. And one of the main ways that that's captured is through rankings. And what I'm going to do in the next couple of slides is point out some of the rankings that I think um, highlight our best features and things that are important to students. One of the most important things for, for myself as a, as a lecturer is the student experience when they come to university. And um, as a university and as a business school over the last few years, we've performed particularly well uh, on a couple of rankings that reflect this. And we were second in the UK and top in Scotland for the amount spent on student facilities. We've invested thing, money in the library and the Bloomberg facility, which we'll talk about a bit more about later. Um, and also we've seen our student, student satisfaction figures increase. We're now ranked 35th overall for student satisfaction, which was a climb of 56 places from last year. And in my role as lecturer, um, and my other role, which is to be fourth year coordinator, I work quite closely with the students across um, a number of areas and one of the main concerns for me is making sure that our students are leaving university feeling um, that they've had a satisfactory experience and we're always listening to our students, we're always gathering and feedback and it's something that we're continuing to work on to make sure that your student experience is everything that you need it to be. When you come to university it's not only about the experience that you have whilst you're studying but also about securing a job at the end of your journey. And we're quite proud of our record of placing graduates in accountancy and finance jobs, with about 91% of our graduates being in work within six months. And you know, Kerrit Watt has a good reputation, particularly within the finance sector in Edinburgh. And you know, from my experience working in the industry and from my contacts within the industry, I know that they like to put Harriet Watt graduates on the interview list, and long may that continue. On the whole, then, we've been ranked fourth in Scotland and 25th in the UK for accountancy and finance. And I think that that sort of sums up the approach that we've adopted in recent um, years and listening to our students and constantly trying to improve what we offer. And the good example of that is our recent overhaul of our programmes, where we've decided to try to tailor um, the courses that we offer to the student experience and to prepare you best for the world of work. Okay, so far we've covered the Edinburgh Business School and we've covered some elements of our performance and that might encourage you to come and study with us. But exactly what do you need to do to get into our university? And that's what we're going to cover now.
Before we discuss the entry requirements to our programmes, I think it's useful to outline what programmes we currently offer. We have two main programmes, our ME Accountancy and our ME Accountancy and Finance. On the ME Accountancy and Finance, we offer, also offer an accelerated version. The ME Accountancy is our specialist accountancy degree. It's designed to prepare you for becoming a practising accountant. So what you see on that course is towards the end of the course in particular, more specialist accountancy courses coming in. We just when we bring in elements such as tax, auditing, and we really focus on giving you the accountancy skills to set you up well for future study or work in accountancy. With our accountancy and finance degree, it's split 50-50 between accountancy and finance. So again, as you progress through that degree, we bring in more finance elements than you would see on the accountancy degree. Both degrees set you up well for a job in either accountancy and or finance with the ME Accountancy being a little more specialised towards accounting subjects. Now our degrees have traditionally been accredited by all of the major accountancy bodies, so AIA, ACCA, CIMA, ICW and ICAS, ICAS being the body that I personally trained with, and you've potentially got nine exemptions depending on the courses you take and which qualification you're looking for. It's the sort of thing that we advise you on when you arrive. Your personal tutor will make sure you're taking the right courses to maximise that. Um, accreditation and that accreditation means that should you go on to set further exams you get to skip some of those exams in the future which is very helpful when you graduate and you're working full-time and studying part-time. Regarding our entry requirements I've summarised these on the slides but I won't go through every one. What I will say is that we do have our fair access policy of um, slightly reduced entry requirements for students who have um, passed caring responsibilities or from certain areas. If this is something that you think you qualify for, please do get in touch. As you can see from the slide, we offer both year one or year two entry, depending on the subjects you've taken. Again, something that we need to flag up here relates to what we discussed previously around accreditation, because depending on which stage you come in at, it will have an impact on the accreditation that you receive. If you have questions about accreditation, again, please do get in touch and we can clear that up for you. The previous slide dealt mainly with school entry, but we also offer entry from college. And again, we have different opportunities in terms of when you start. You can start in year one, year two, or year three of the standard programme. And you can also additionally apply to join the accelerated programme, which starts in year two. Again, there are implications for accreditation depending on your starting point. If this is something that affects you, please do get in touch with us. Having covered the degrees that we offer and the entry requirements to get onto those degrees, I think it's quite important to take a few minutes to lay out what accounting is and what elements of accounting we cover on our programmes to give you a sense of exactly what it is you'd be coming to study if you were to join us. What is accounting and what will you learn if you came to study um, accountancy at Heriot Watt University? Well, we cover these four elements across um, our programmes. Uh, we cover financial reporting, auditing, management accounting and taxation. And these subject areas are spread across different courses in different years. I'll just say a few brief words about each to give you a sense of the sort of things that you'd be learning. Now, financial reporting is the gathering of financial information and um, putting it into a format that it allows users external to the business to make financial decisions. That could be um, governments, could be investors. It's on the course, what we'll do is we'll run you through the rules, the regulations, and the practical aspects of preparing financial reports. Closely related to that is the concept of auditing. Now, if we're preparing financial reports um, for individuals external to businesses to make decisions, we need some means of making sure that that information is as accurate as it possibly can be. And that's where the role of the auditor comes in. And auditors are independent uh, individuals who go into businesses and check that their financial reports have been prepared correctly. That's quite an important subject because it's a big area for employment um, after you graduate. And lots of our graduates end up working in auditing. In contrast to that, we have what's called management accounting. And management accounting is again gathering and presenting financial information, but this time it's within the business. We, 
It's not for external users, but for internal users. And it's used for making decisions about the business um, from budgeting to costing and pricing. Any sort of decision that's based around financial information to help run the business. And then we have taxation. Uh, taxation, whether that's personal tax or corporation tax, we show you the rules, regulations, laws, but also the practical applications of tax. And it's on that course that you'll learn things like whether a Jaffa cake is a cake or a biscuit. All of our courses are backed up by the work done by the Accounting Research Centre and the professional expertise of staff. And as I said, all of these subjects are we spread across different courses in different years and we build up your knowledge gradually so that by the time you graduate, you have a solid understanding of all of these components um, of accounting. I think it's relevant here to mention careers in accounting. Not everybody watching this will be interested in becoming a professional accountant, but many will. And many of our students come to study accountancy with us with the sole aim of becoming an accountant. So what's the traditional route into accountancy? Well, normally you would complete your degree programme at university, graduate and then obtain a graduate job and a training contract in practice or industry. And that means you're working for um, a firm who does accounting, whether that's a firm in public practice or um, any business that has a finance function. And at the same time, you would study towards a professional qualification. That usually lasts for around three years. Um, you need both work experience and to pass exams, and then you become recognised as a chartered accountant or a fully qualified accountant. And that's the route I, I took. My own personal journey was that I started at Harriet Watt doing an accountancy and finance degree. I graduated, I secured a, a training contract with a small firm up in Cooper. I then um, passed my exams, got the work experience and then became a chartered accountant before I then returned to teach. And this is the mo one of the most common routes. It's by, by no means the only route. Um, if you do a study a for a degree in accountancy or accountancy and finance, you still have a solid business degree, which allows you to go um, into a range of different uh, graduate jobs, as we'll speak about a little bit later in the presentation. Having covered what accounting is, and if that's something that sounds interesting to you, over the next few slides, we're going to talk about what it's like to actually study accounting with us. The first thing to discuss is the common first year. Now, this is for people who are starting in year one of the four year programme on the standard MA Accountancy or MA Accountancy and Finance degree. Uh, Harry Watt, within the business school, everybody who's studying accounting, finance, economics or management will study the same subjects in first year. So as you can see on the slide in semester one, you'll have accounting and finance, economics, and the introduction to marketing and some management. In semester two, we have some more um, useful but generic subjects, including academic skills, becoming a professional, discovering business. And we also give you a free choice of courses um, across the um, business school. So by the end of the first year, everybody's got the same knowledge. As we move into year two of the programme, um, things become a bit more specialised. But the good thing about doing the com having the common first year is that should you change your mind and no longer want to study accountancy or want to switch to accountancy, you can do so easily. If you're studying on the accelerated programme and you start in year two, you would skip the common first year. One of the most important areas to discuss for when you're coming to study at university is how are you going to be taught? Um, during this academic year in particular, we've been using what's called responsive blended learning. That's where we've moved some of our teaching online, but maintained on campus face-to-face -face learning where possible. You still have access on the RBL approach to um, all of the same learning experiences that we had before. We've simply rearranged things to make it as flexible and responsive to the current situation as possible. So for example, we have one hour worth of online lecture and we have one hour worth of tutorial per course per week. The delivery of that changes depending um, on course level and on different um, programmes. It's obviously unclear to what the position will be come next year, but having worked on the responsive blended approach this year, it puts us in a great position to be ready for whatever next year holds. 
So you still have access to your online lectures, you still have access to either face-to-face -face tutorials or online tutorials, and you'll also have access to lots of other um, directed learning materials, whether it's discussion boards, blogs, videos, podcasts. You know, the, the big change for, for us as lecturers during responsive blended learning has been to um, adapt our skills to the situation. And we've come up with lots of um, good material that has supported students' learning, and we'll continue to do so into next year. In addition to how we're going to teach you, how you're going to be assessed is obviously an important concern for students. And and the business school, we use a range of different methods of assessment. We use class tests, individual essays, group essays, group projects and presentations as coursework. Now, in accountancy and finance, the majority of courses have a requirement for coursework to be worth 30 percent of your overall mark. And it will differ from course to course, but some of these elements will come together to make up 30% of your overall mark. The good thing about this, and it's something that I didn't realise was useful until after I graduated, was that not only are we assessing you using these methods, but we're also teaching you life skills that you use when you get into the workplace, particularly on things that students tend to find difficult at the time, such as group essays and group projects, or indeed presentation skills, but then become very useful when you're in the workplace. I remember presentations being very daunting but as a student as I progress into the workplace I really benefit from having learned those skills at university and worked, worked on them in a essentially a safe um, space. If 30% of the mark is coursework the remaining 70% will be in the form of end of semester examinations. That again will vary between course to course. There'll be a mixture of numerical questions, written questions, and as you progress through your university studies, more essay based questions towards the end. But a whole range of assessments to capture and test the knowledge that you've learned. Given that we can't see each other face to face at the moment, I think it's useful to show you who we'd be teaching you if you came to study with us. As you can see from the slide, we have a range of different lecturers from different backgrounds, cultures, uh, and with different experiences. We have people with practical professional experience, we have people who are world leading researchers, and the combination um, means that the teaching you will receive is of the highest quality. I've included a slide on our graduates after a The final area I want to talk to you about is what I've called beyond the classroom. And this recognises that you're not just coming to university to learn um, and to be assessed, but we're looking to add value to your experience to help you build up your CV and prepare you for the business world. So we're going to talk through some elements um, of how we do that within the accountancy department in Edinburgh Business School and the university. And we'll also make reference to some of the help and support that's available to help you on your journey. Whilst learning, teaching in us. The first area I want to talk about is our Bloomberg Trading Room. This is one of the areas where the university has invested significant funds over the last few years and it presents students with a really unique opportunity to learn some additional skills and to add those skills to your CV. Now the Bloomberg Trading Room gives you a hands-on experience of working in a simulated market environment. So you'll be using real data and learning the functions of a trading and non-trading environment and at the same time being able to study towards a Bloomberg Market Concepts course certificate. Again, adding things to your CV, giving you more skills, but in general, giving you an awareness of the industry that you might well be going into. And that's something that's hard to envisage for students. I remember being a graduate myself and it being really hard to get to grips with what exactly the accountancy of finance would look like when I got there and something like the Bloomberg Trading Room really adds value in that respect and um, so it's well worth um, checking out and making use of if you come to study with us. In terms of gaining an understanding of an industry that you might go on to work in, the student-led investment society is the perfect opportunity to learn all about that industry but in a safe space. There's many ways that the Investment Society can do this. They offer educational programmes on financial analysis and to give you an understanding of the financial universe, the financial world that you're going to go into. They host a yearly conference featuring guest speakers from industry, furthering the links between the university, the business school students and the finance industry. They produce a student-led magazine called Tech Capital House 
and almost more importantly, they hold regular social events. So it's a great way to meet people as well as learning all about uh, investments and the world of finance. One of the biggest selling points about our degrees at Heriot Watt is the opportunity to go global. So via Global Global, we offer students the opportunity to study the exact same content that's on offer at Edinburgh, but on our Dubai or Malaysia campus. Students can go for a year or a semester. And we've had many accounts and finance students over the last few years take this opportunity. And some of the pictures you can see in the slide are from when our students Poppy and Jennifer went to Malaysia for a semester. And, you know, they, they loved studying in a different context. They loved learning in a different culture. And, you know, one of the big selling points for them was that even though they had to get up early and go to 9 a.m. lectures, by lunchtime they were often finished those lectures and the place that they were staying just happened to have a pool. So they were poolside by the afternoon. They also managed to fit in quite a lot of travelling and they saw lots of Asia. So they got kind of both best of both worlds. They got their education and they were allowed to see parts of the world that they might otherwise not have seen. Now, the slight qualifier here is with, obviously with the global situation where we're not entirely sure when Go Global is going to start up again. It's projected to not be available until at least September 22, but obviously that might be subject to change. If this is something that you are interested in then, and you would like more information about, um, please do ask. The last thing I want to discuss is the help and support that's available beyond your studies. Now this year, more than any other year, we are aware how much our journeys can be interrupted and getting from first year to fourth year to graduation is never a straightforward process. So we've got lots of mechanisms in place to help and support you along that, that journey. When you arrive, you would be allocated a personal tutor. So that's an academic member of staff who will support you throughout the four years. They're designed to be your first point of contact. They'll have regular chats with you, see how things are going, talk about exam results and support you in any way they can. All staff have office hours. So in normal situations, that would be when we're sitting in our office with our door open. You can come along and chat to us during that period. Um, Obviously, with things moving online, we've had to move to an online office hour, but the same concept applies. Staff are available and accountancy and finance, certainly when we're in on campus, most staff have an open door policy. So come along and speak to us if you have any issues. Outside of the department, we also have our dedicated well-being service where there's you can make appointments, you can drop in, you can speak to someone if things are getting on top of you, if you just need someone to chat to, because again, you know, the journey is not easy. Things happen, whether it's within your studies or outside your studies that can impact on your learning. And we're here to support you through that. So lots of it, different mechanisms to help you get um, from first year to fourth year and to help you secure an education. That's all I've got to say. I won't keep you any longer. I just want to say thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, please do get in touch um, with either myself or the recruitment team. I've put my email address up on this slide. And if you have any questions after watching this video, then please do get in touch. But thanks again, and hopefully we'll see some of you next year.